Hey you guys, we're ready to dive into a new section today called Rational Functions. And before we really jump right in there, I just wanted to tell you what a great job you're doing. Um, I really think as, as we get older, you start to realize that maybe the most powerful tool that we have in our journey towards success in anything is our consistency. I want you to just think about that idea of consistency. And it's something that I've, you know, I've had spurts in life where I've been really consistent and other spurts where I wish I was more consistent. But I think math especially is one of those um, tools or, you know, one of those things that really rewards consistency. And we're doing a great job in that area. So everything we do uh, for the next several videos is going to revolve around this uh, idea of investigating rational functions. And today we're going to talk about um, introducing you to asymptotes. So what are we going to see in this video? By the time we're done with this video, hopefully this is a question that we find pretty easy. So we're going to use this graph here and interpreting and reading this graph, we're going to be able to say as X approaches two from the left, um, you know, what is F of X approach? Or a second question might be as X approaches infinity, what is F of X approach? So those are the things that we're trending towards. Okay, so let's define what a rational function actually is. A rational function are the quotient, okay, that's a nice word there. It's the quotient of two polynomial functions. So P is a polynomial, maybe it's X, maybe it's X plus two, maybe it's X squared, maybe it's X squared plus five X minus six, you know, something like that. And then Q of X is another polynomial function. The, the word rational is pretty much synonymous with the, the, the word fraction, okay? So when any, anytime we say rational functions, you can think fractional functions. And of course, the key is Q cannot be equal to zero. Otherwise, we'd be undefined and bad things happen. So what does a rational function look like? I'm going to just scroll through a few examples that I tried to cook up for us here today. There's Here's the second example. Here's the third example. Here's the fourth one. And I think just um, probably your first knee-jerk reaction might be that these functions have a lot of funny looking asymptotes. So for instance, um, we've got a, a vertical asymptote right here along the y-axis. We've got a horizontal asymptote right here. And again, an asymptote is something that the graph trends towards but never actually touches. So this graph here is very unique. It, it has zero x-intercepts and it has zero y-intercepts. It never actually touches either axes. Um, our next function has a vertical asymptote here at x equals negative three and a horizontal at y equals two. Let's see. Um, let's see, this, this function has a, a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two and x equals positive two. And then it also has a horizontal at y equals zero. And then this fourth example we have, we've got a vertical at x equals negative three, a vertical at x equals positive three, and again, a horizontal here at y equals zero. Now what's interesting about that picture that we hadn't seen in the others is that the graph can pass through a horizontal asymptote there as long as the endpoints are trending towards that graph. So you could have as many intersections as you want in here as long as these endpoints are trending towards that horizontal asymptote. So the, the real formal definition of a vertical asymptote says the line x equals a, which could be x equals two, x equals negative three, whatever, is a vertical asymptote of the graph of function f if f of x is either increasing or decreasing without bound as x gets closer and closer to that a value. A couple of fast facts. A rational function might have zero vertical asymptotes. It might have one or it could have many. Uh, there's really no cap or limit to how many vertical asymptotes a rational function could have. Um, the graph of a rational function never intersects or crashes through a vertical asymptote. Although we'll see later, it can intersect a horizontal like we just mentioned. And of course, we'll be using dashed lines to show the asymptotes. So technically, they're not part of the graph. It's more of a tool that we use to indicate the existence of a vertical asymptote. So really four scenarios that I want you to be able to visualize here as we get going. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about direction. So let's say I've got an asymptote right here. 
at x equals a. And I'm not even going to draw the x and y axis because they don't matter. So you might have your graph trend this way. So what you'll notice is as we're getting, if, if I'm walking on the curve here, I'm getting closer and closer and closer to x equals a. And as I do so, the graph is growing without bound. It's increasing without bound. So we would say as x approaches a from the left side, f of x is approaching infinity. It's going up. All right. Um, the second scenario is very, very similar. We've got this asymptote at x equals a, but maybe we're doing this on the left side. So as x approaches a from the left again, now f of x is approaching negative infinity. Okay. And you can probably see where the next two examples are going. They're going to be almost the same, except now we're going to be approaching the asymptote from the right side. So here's my asymptote. We could be doing this. So again, um, if I start here and there's like pretend like this ant is walking along the curve, as that ant gets closer and closer and closer to x equals a, the graph is increasing without bound. So we would say mathematically as x approaches a from the right, f of x is approaching infinity. And last but not least, We've got a vertical asymptote at x equals a. Maybe my function behaves like this. As x approaches a from the right side, f of x is approaching negative infinity. Okay, so now we'll, we'll kind of flirt with the horizontal asymptotes. And we could almost have subdivided this into two lessons, done one video on just vertical and another one on just horizontal. But I felt confident that we could handle the two at the same time. So now all of a sudden, we're talking about the line y equals b. So we're talking about going east and west instead of north and south. And is it, it's going to be a horizontal asymptote to the graph of f. If f of x, oh gosh, I screwed that up. The line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote of the graph of a function f. If f of x approaches b as x increases or decreases without bound. Let me clarify that a little bit. When we say x increases without bound, we're saying x itself approaches infinity. Or when we say x decreases without bound, we're saying x approaches negative infinity. So in this case, if x approaches infinity, you're going as far to the right on your graph as you can imagine. Or if x approaches negative infinity, you're going as far to the left as you could imagine. A couple of fast facts here. A function may have at most two horizontal asymptotes. It is impossible for any mathematical function to have more than two. Most of them have one or zero. And um, a, a function may potentially intersect or crash through a horizontal asymptote, you know, somewhere in the middle of the graph. A couple of scenarios that I want to try to visualize for you. And I'm going to do everything as x approaching um, positive infinity. So we're kind of moving to the right. Let's say we have this horizontal asymptote somewhere at y equals a. The graph could do this. So we would say as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches, whoops, I'm going to use the letter b here, approaches b. Or maybe scenario number two, we've got this. Um, asymptote. Here's an example of a crash where I could crash, but then it's going to kind of boomerang back and really hug very closely to that asymptote. So again, as X approaches infinity, again, F of X is approaching B. Or we don't even have to come from above. We certainly could have a scenario where you've got this asymptote at Y equals B and the graph does this. So again, as x approaches infinity, because we're moving towards the right. Oh my gosh, I just drew an 8. How silly is that? <laughs> All right, let's try infinity here. As x approaches infinity, f of x approaches b. And, and, and I could have drawn a crash on that one too if I wanted to. I could have gone above and then kind of boomeranged back. That's kind of a fun thing to think about. Or we could have done all of those examples while x is approaching negative infinity and moving to the far left edge of the screen. But I bet you can imagine and visualize what those look like. Okay, so here's our one example here today. We've got this really fun graph that's got a lot of action. There's a lot going on, and we're going to just practice interpreting it and talking about what does it mean to approach uh, from the left or from the right and things like that. So this first one here, 
as x approaches negative 3 from the left. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to pick a point that is just to the left of negative 3, but also on the graph. So I'm thinking, okay, here's a nice point that's to the left of negative 3. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ride that graph. I'm going to follow that graph and get closer and closer to x equals negative 3. And what do you notice about the pattern? Yeah, we the graph is decreasing without bound, so f of x is approaching negative infinity. What if we approached negative 3 from the right? So we're going to pick a point that sits to the right of negative 3, and we're just going to ride that graph. And as I ride the graph, the graph is increasing without bound, and we would say x approach f of x approaches positive infinity. Okay. Um, what if x approaches positive 3 from the left? So let's consider this one. Positive 3 from the left. I'm going to pick a point to the left of 3, ride my graph. We're decreasing without bound. So we could say, let's just say f of x approaches negative infinity. Now that's not going to be, you know, just because in my two examples, both times we approached a number from the left, the answer ended up being negative infinity. That won't always be the case, okay? That's just kind of a coincidence. All right. What if we approach positive 3 from the right? Let's see if I can switch colors here. So if I said x approaches 3 from the right, I'm going to pick a point to the right of 3. I'm going to ride that graph. And you can see the graph increasing without bound. So we could say f of x approaches infinity. So those were all vertical asymptotes, okay? All four of those were vertical asymptotes. Now we're going to talk about the horizontal asymptote here as we finish things up. What we want to look at now, if we can squeeze these bears in, is what if x approaches what if x approaches negative infinity? So think left. Anytime we think negative infinity, think to the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, and I'm just going to walk as far left as I can. And what does it feel like the graph is getting closer and closer to? It feels like it's getting closer and closer to a height of 0. Similarly, we'll see something similar, I think, on the other side here. As x approaches infinity, that's what this says. It's, like it's cut off a little bit on the screen here. As x approaches infinity, that means we're over here. What are we getting closer and closer to? I think the graph is getting closer and closer to zero again. Just from the, you know, on the left side, we were approaching zero from underneath. But on the right side, we're approaching zero from above. So that's all I got for you today. So hopefully that's, you know, we bit off quite a bit, but hopefully not uh, too much. And we'll digest all this information about vertical and horizontal asymptotes. And we'll keep building throughout the week as we tackle more rational functions.